Hey, it's Tim here. It's March and Tableau have actually been updating Tableau Pass behind the scenes. This is just a short video to show you what those updates are. As ever, let's get started. Okay, so I have to be honest, I'm going to stop covering Tableau Pass for a short while because I think they're going to be updated very, very quickly. So I think over the next month, we might see some changes to the platform. But I wanted to make a brief video just to show people how to stay in touch with these changes because they're kind of happening behind the scenes and they're not in sequence with typical release cycles for Tableau. Uh, don't forget that the release cycles have changed, so they're now going to be only three updates a year. We should see more in those updates as a result, but also we should see behavior like this. Things coming out before the release because really they just need to come out and people need to start using them. So because Tableau Pass is cloud only, these updates can be rolled out to users. Tableau Pass is a browser only experience. It doesn't really touch Tableau desktop. So um, if you head to the Tableau release navigator, I've made a video on this before. This is probably the most up to date, detailed list of changes within the Tableau product suite. It doesn't just cover Tableau Pulse, it covers all the products. You can see here that Tableau Cloud is the selected product here, but you can actually choose the specific version you want to look at. Uh, you can choose a specific offering, whether it's an add-on or not. Uh, but for this, I'm just going to go ahead and focus in on Tableau Pulse. Let's just go ahead and click those. And you'll see that straight away, we get this sort of much narrowed down list and everything in Tableau Pulse is new. There's no real changes here. Um, so you can see the new updates. So some of the comments that I've had in response to my video showing people how it works have actually touched on some of these points. And I didn't actually know there were sort of inadequacies with the capabilities and the features, and um, partly because I've used them and I didn't come across those issues. Or what happened was I used Tableau Pulse, did my video about how it works. I keep that deliberately simple. Didn't try advanced uh, capabilities until what was essentially three weeks ago. And then in that release, because I'm using a cloud instance of Tableau uh, Cloud, I was already on the latest version. So I wasn't seeing the issues that people were seeing. And I was thinking that we were all on the same version. So it actually turns out uh, the instance of Tableau Cloud that I have is a little bit ahead of the release cadence. And so that's why uh, when people are using Tableau Pulse, they're not seeing the same issues as I'm seeing necessarily. So this is probably the definitive way to sort of map those capabilities. That's not me giving an excuse for not covering stuff. It's just it's just something that I just did. I just missed. I should really be aware of that, but it's just not something I thought of, and I didn't think to call it out because I didn't think it was a problem. So now I know I'll be sure to sort of try and make sure I differentiate between those two. Um, nonetheless, um, if you see this list, you can see here the March updates. We've got these specific updates, and these were rolled out to Tableau Pulse. Uh, very recently, there was a little bit of service maintenance to Tableau Cloud that happened a few days ago now, uh, but nonetheless, we can see what these updates are. So let's go from the top. Uh, Tableau Pulse ad hoc questions for insights. In the guided insights experience, click the ask button and enter your own questions related to the insights surface for a metric. Receive semantically, um, what does it say? Matched suggestions for more insights. So what this is, is essentially a capability where if you ask a question, uh, you can actually go and hit ask and type a question, and it will take what you've typed and try and match it to an existing insight that it already has. I'll try and put a screenshot of that uh, up on screen now. And so that's kind of handy. Um, I wish this was a little bit more powerful given we're all using AI. I wish it could sort of prompt Tableau to go off and do a bit of analysis for you. This is sort of what ChatGPT was actually kind of good at. It was really good at saying, okay, this is a question I don't know the information for, but I have access to the data source. Let me go and do the math and figure out what's going on and come back with an answer. The reason that's probably not the case is because that actually came back with inaccurate answers sometimes, unless you did the due diligence and checked it, it wasn't always accurate. So maybe that kind of technology is still, still a bit early, but nonetheless, it's good to see that Tableau is starting to think along those lines. Okay, the next one is Tableau Pulse applied filters shown for metrics. So when you visit the insights exploration page for a metric, the specific filters, uh, well, let's, let's try the, this again. The specific filters are applied to the metric are now listed above the chart. So when you make a change to the insights, you actually get a little breakdown showing you what those uh, filters are. So you can actually see them. This wasn't previously the case. It was just the metric and it was kind of defined in the text, but now being able to see them means you can be more certain about what's going on with your metric. Again, I've put an image of that on screen so you can kind of take a look at that. Um, the next one is Tableau Pulse improved metric recommendations for dashboards. So 
When you explore recommended metrics for dashboards, Tableau now shows you more relevant and informative recommendations. Additionally, calculated fields from the data source now appear in recommendations. So I'm not sure what this is entirely, but this is my gut instinct based on a, a few bits of information that I've read from various sources. Um, what this is, is when you're looking at Tableau, Tableau desktop, Tableau dashboards, typically, in the data guide, there is a little panel that pops up and in there are supposed to be what are called pulse recommendations. It essentially takes the necessary attributes for a pulse metric definition and it creates it from the dashboard you're looking at. So you can essentially look at a dashboard, go look at the recommendation and go, oh, look, here's some possible possible metric definitions that I can go and track. And so you can click on those and it will take you to the Tableau Pulse editing experience and then you're able to just go ahead and use them. So that's supposed to be, I think, what this is. I haven't actually got it to work, but I have seen a demo of it and I think it's pretty cool because it could allow for these sort of semantically created metrics to come out of dashboards. And if they can push that technology far enough that it can be trusted for users to go and pull their own metrics from and creators can just simply sort of have oversight of these metrics, I think that would be super powerful. Okay, Tableau Pulse um, improved navigation options. So Tableau Pulse Sparkle, <laughs> that's a great name. Upper left corner for the Insights Exploration page now includes drop down options for navigating the Tableau Cloud homepage and followed metrics. So, um, one of the biggest things about Tableau Pulse, uh, at least in my sort of demos that I've gone through, is that the back button doesn't do things consistently and there's no sort of escape hatch back to Tableau Cloud. They basically fix those and you can more easily get to the followed metrics. It's kind of weird with the followed metrics because it it's kind of in front of you and it's not in front of you because there's sort of two ways of seeing it. And so this just brings those options a little bit more forward and it makes it easier to use. So I think this is really good to see. Okay, the last one is one that I saw in my YouTube comments. A few people actually messaged me saying, hey, I'm having issues with pre-aggregated fields inside of metric definitions. I didn't know this was a bug and it might be because I was using again an advanced issue, advanced version of Tableau Pulse and therefore I didn't see the bug. But a lot of people were struggling with this. I saw it in the comments and I kind of didn't really know what to think of it. But it turns out that was actually a feature that was still in development and it's now been pushed and it's now available in Tableau Pulse. So go ahead and check that out. I think this is pretty cool. Um, it, it, to me, it's the kind of basic thing that should have been there from the start. But hey, when you launch a new feature, you kind of have to start somewhere. So, you know, if this didn't make the list, it didn't make the list. Thankfully, we're not having to wait for a release to get this, which is kind of good. So. It's good to see this. So that's pretty much it. That's all the changes to Tableau Pulse. I'll try and do these whenever they do big updates to Tableau Pulse. And of course, along with the new releases, I'll be doing these. But that said, that's pretty much it for Tableau Pulse for now. I think I've done enough Pulse content for a while. Um, I need to get back on the track. So I've actually recorded several videos about embedding, several videos about other topic. I just haven't got around to editing them. So what I'm gonna do is for the next week or so, um, I'm recording this on the 29th of March. You're probably going to see this video in April for the next week or so. I'm actually going to start recording content and editing content ahead of time so that as they come out, there's a little bit more of a better cadence as we build up to conference. And yeah, we start to get a little bit more momentum on the channel. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.